This week's shout out goes to Astroth TCG. Be sure to check them out. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Skyscape TCG. We're going off with the Primordial Evolution deck. So starting things off, going first, we'll take a quick look at the Summon deck. Now keep in mind Summon deck can contain up to 20 cards, which this as the full 20. And this is your main deck or your body. The cards in your summon deck cannot be included with your body as well, so just keep that in mind, guys. So these cards are the special character summons that we are running in this. So first things first, we are running four copies of Servant of Elatar. Now, Servant of Elatar has a very amazing effect, where you can summon this card if you control an evolution character summon, and when this card is summoned, you may add an evolution weapon from your body to your hand. So this makes your deck overall more consistent, gets you out with more powerful and aggressive combos, and can really help start your overall combos of the game. Next, of course, we are going into a powerhouse card, which I definitely recommend running at four if you can, and that is the four copies of Orion, King of Lutharia. Now, this card reads that you may summon this card if you control an evolution summon and a Lutharia permanent relic. It also has lifebound and it can attack up to twice per turn. So for those of you guys that do not know what lifebound is, whenever the card would deal direct damage to an opponent, you gain the amount of life uh, that your opponent takes in damage. So this card can attack twice, so say this card attacks twice directly alone, you're basically gaining 6 life while your opponent is losing 6 life. This card's a powerhouse, and I definitely run recommend running this card at as many copies as you possibly can. Next, of course, we have Orion's best friend, Doran Vin Overlord. Oh, we're actually just running 3 copies of that. And this card reads out that you may summon this card if you control an Orion and an Evolution Summon card. And then when this card is summoned, send a card on the field to the Severed Pile, then target a character summon you control, that card gains one rune. So being able to not only send something to the Severed Pile, but being able to buff up your own character summons makes this card really amazing. It's just a bit harder to summon, so that's why we're only running three copies of it. Next, of course, we are running three copies of Pyrune, Dragon of Elatar. So this card reads that you may summon this card if you control two or more evolution summon cards with different names. Then, once per turn, you may exhaust a weapon that you control. If you do, this card can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. So just going into the multi-attacks, uh, just another way to be really offensive with the deck. And again, it's just another powerhouse card, so definitely recommend running that card. Uh, next, of course, one of my favorite artworks for a card, uh, for a character summon, really, is Rena, Soldier of Lutharia. So this card reads that you may summon this card if you control two or more character summons, and then when this card is summoned, you may target another summon card you control and attach this card to it, and if you do, that card cannot be severed by card effects. So this card is just really easy to uh, play if you're going off on your combo, and just being able to get that uh, sheer protection off of the card alone is uh, very powerful as it can function as uh, just a uh, big three rune count character summon, or again just protection, so very versatile there. But finishing up the summon deck, we do run one copy of Yggdran, Guardian of Elatar, and one copy of Primordial Evolution Elatar herself. So what Yggdran, Guardian, or Guardian of Elatar, gets to do is that uh, once per turn you may summon this card if your Elatar is dealt a direct attack, and if you do, switch the attack, or switch the attack target to this card. So you basically uh, summon this if your Elatar here would get attacked directly, and you play this and block the attack for her. And if this card on the field would be severed by battle, you may add an Evolution Summon card from your severed pile to your hand. So say you have uh, one of these uh, these baby evolution cards, which we'll get in later. You have one of those in your shadow pile, you get to add that to your hand and uh, keep going off with your combo. So really good combo enabler, but also very good protector, or guardian as it is supposed to be. And then of course, getting into the, the big and the beautiful Elatar herself. Uh, this card has a massive rune count of 8, which is incredibly high. And this effects to read that you may summon this card once per turn, by placing this on an evolutionary burst siliquist that you control. 
It's unaffected by card effects except its own. And it reads that when this card is summoned, deal 3 damage to each arsenal and summon card that your opponents control. So this card can easily clean off boards, but it's also a very big uh, 8 damage, so you pretty much just slap this down, uh, deal 3 damage to uh, everything else that your opponent controls, uh, basically just being able to wipe the field, and then you're able to swing for 8 damage, and then, you know, if you don't have anything to block with it, you just put down Yggdran, block the attack if this gets destroyed, you're basically able to just add back a copy of uh, something like Acnail or another one of those cards that we'll get in later, to just further your combos and keep Elatar alive, so you can just keep attacking with it next turn. So again, very amazing summon deck, but with all of that out of the way guys, let's get into the main deck or body for the Primordial Evolution deck list. So first things first, we're going in strong with four copies of Evolutionary Beginning Acnail. Now Acnail is the arguably the best card in the deck because this card is a character summon and you might be asking yourself, didn't you just say character summons can only go on the summon deck? Usually yes, but this has a special rule. So it says here that uh, this card is every type. You may have up to four copies of this card in your body. Cannot be in a summon deck. So you can actually run this card in your uh, main deck in your body. Just keep in mind that you can only do it with cards that have this ruling. Other cards like Elatar and such you cannot run in your main deck. So do keep that rule in mind guys. But then this card has the effect where you can summon this card from your hand, and then if this card is summoned, you may search your body for a different evolution card and add it to your hand. And as you guys can already tell, this deck has a lot, and I mean a lot, of evolution cards. So this card has so much versatility, being able to find you all of your different evolution cards to use, and uh, you can get out more of your evolution summon cards from your main deck, uh, from your body, and then you can also get out your weapons, your shields, your arsenal cards, uh, even arcane cards as well, guys. You can pretty much get off anything from your deck with just this card alone, which definitely I recommend running four copies of this card because it's amazing, guys. It's, it's just insane. The next, of course, we do run four copies of Evolutionary Boost Narvana. Now, how the Evolution cards work is you basically like to stack them on top of each other. So this card reads that you may summon this card from your hand by placing it on an Acnail or an Arvana summon card that you control. So if you have Acnail out, you can search for an Arvana and place an Arvana on top of it. And just like that, we went from a two rune count smaller summon card to a pretty formidable summon card with three rune count. But this does have a secondary effect where if this card is summoned on another Narvana, this card cannot be severed by card effects, and it may attack directly. So you get bonuses for being able to stack them or evolve them on top of one another, and if you do so, it gains protection, and it also can attack directly and put in some uh, very much needed offensive damage. Now getting on to the final evolution summon card that we run in our body, we do run Evolutionary Burst Siliquis. So as mentioned before, uh, you can put the Elator on top of that from your summon deck to uh, get off the effect that we talked about earlier. But for this card alone, you may summon this card from your hand by placing it on a Nirvana or Siliquis summon card that you control. If you summon this card on another Siliquis, you may draw two cards and summon a Nirvana from your hand or from your body. So. Say that we play one of it, we jump up from a 3 rune count formidable card to a 5 rune count beast of a summon card, and then if we're able to play another one on top of it, we are not only able to draw 2 cards from our body, getting into some pretty epic advantage there, but we are also able to take from our body a copy of Narvana to summon beside it, so now we have a total of potentially 8 damage on the field, but you can also uh, put another copy of Narvana on top of itself to be able to gain the amazing power boost there. So again, just very interesting combos that you can come up with, guys. Uh, do keep in mind, though, that there is the uh, rule with uh, the summon cards where you can only have one with the same name, so you can't have uh, two different Siliquises out, they have to be stacked on top of each other. 
or uh, you can't have two Narvana out, they have to be stacked on top of each other as well. So just keep that little ruling in mind, guys, because, uh, yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't misplay there, guys, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, but next, going into the weapons of the deck, we do run four copies of Evolutionary Strike. Now, this is a very powerful card. This is basically uh, this deck's version of Dagger Blood. It's just an amazing blowout weapon card to have. Um, it may look weak at first, but it is very powerful. So this card, it costs one life, and it reads that if you control an Evolution Summon card, this non-attached card can attack directly. So what does non-attached mean? Well, say we have a copy of our Siliquis out, we can decide to attach our Evolutionary Strike to it to boost it, to uh, be able to attack for 7 damage instead of just 5, or instead of that we can have that unattached in our own Arsenal Zone. So say that we do have this in our own Arsenal Zone, this card can attack directly for 2 direct points of damage, which is very nice, but its secondary effect reads that when you attach this card to an Evolution Summon, that card can attack twice during each battle phase this turn. So say that we have this out in our Arsenal Zone, we're able to make Siliquis. We can now attach our Evolutionary Strike to it, and then when we boost, it'll be 7 damage from the boost, but because of the effect of Strike, we get to rise up our Siliquis and attack again for an additional 5 damage, which makes this card a powerhouse when it comes to being able to attack offensively. Now do keep in mind this card can't work with uh, cards like Elatar because it's unaffected by card effects except its own. So uh, yeah, don't don't let your opponents cheat you out with that if they do try to do that because that's the uh, that's the one thing that this can't do unfortunately. Uh, but again, very powerful card to run nonetheless. Next, of course, we do run four copies of Evolutionary Animosity. This card is really nice. It is a two-handed weapon with four fatality, and it reads off that this non-attached card can only be blocked by two or more cards. So if you need to get in some pretty big damage and you want to just be able to uh, attack for four massive points of damage, you attack, and if this card is not attached to anything, they have to either have two cards to block with and block this and potentially lose their two cards on the field, or they just have to take the four damage directly and uh, they're at the disadvantage because of that. But next, of course, we do run a bit of a... Uh, I guess you could call this a hand shield, uh, a term like that if you want to, or a, uh, a hand guard, something like that, but this is Evolutionary Evasion. So this card reads that when you or an Evolution of Summon card that you control would be dealt a direct attack, you may pay this card's life cost and play this card from your hand. If you do, you may block that attack with this card. So essentially, this card, uh, it does what it says, but... Basically, if you have this card in your hand, uh, you can have your opponent attack you, and, you know, they're thinking that uh, they're going to win, and that you don't really have anything to block with, they're kind of getting cocky and trying to attack into you. Well, you just drop this out, you have something to block with, and you uh, basically block that attack, and uh, you or your summon card don't take any of that damage because you're blocking with a shield, and it takes all the damage. So, a uh, really good combat trick right there. Again, it does just cost the one life, but again, one life is the pretty much the bare minimum for what you can spend in life cost. So, very powerful a card nonetheless, and it can definitely help you win games and be a very good defensive card. Speaking of very good defensive cards, we have arguably uh, the most broken card in the entire deck, and that is the Evolutionary Guard. So this card reads that if you control an Evolutionary Character Summon, or if you control an Evolution Character Summon, excuse me, uh, your opponent can only target this non-attached card for attacks. When this card blocks an attack, you may deal 2 damage to the attacking card. So not only does this card deal damage to whatever tries to attack it, but say you have a board where you have your Primordial Evolution Elatar out, and you have Evolutionary Guard. Well, of course they want to get rid of your Elatar, but before they can, they're going to have to put all of their attacks into your Evolutionary Guard, be able to attack over that, have their card survive, and when this card finally goes, they can finally get to attacking the Elatar. So this card basically becomes a floodgate for any kind of attacking that your opponent has in mind for you. And overall, this card is absolutely insane and arguably broken because it's able to divert all attacks to this card alone. 
Uh, if you're able to uh, have multiple copies of this card in your hand, one goes and you play the other, well, good luck to your opponent because it might be pretty hard outing that. Next, of course, we do run some very nice arcane cards. This card is called Devolution. Now, you might be thinking, isn't this supposed to be an evolution deck? Why would we want to devolve our cards? Well, there's a very good reason. So, for Devolution, this card only costs one life, and that reads, Once per turn, target an evolution summon card that you control. Summon an evolution card from beneath it. If you do, return the targeted card to the hand, and all other cards beneath the targeted card are sent to the severed pile. So, with that wall of text being uh, read, what do you guys think that means for your combos? Say we have Siliquis, Narvana, and Acnael out. Well, we'd have Acnael, and we'd have Narvana, and we'd have Siliquis. So this reads that, again, we can target a summon card that we control, summon an evolution card from beneath it. So, we'll summon out Narvana from our Siliquis, and if you do, return the targeted card to the hand. You can return Siliquis to the hand, and then Acnail is sent to the severed pile. Well, we have Narvana, and we can evolve back into Siliquis. And say we have another Siliquis, well, we can play that from our hand. Or, even better, say we do have uh, multiple copies. Let's just say, for example, we have, uh, of course, Acnail, Narvana, Siliquis, and say we have another Siliquis. So what we would do is we just have this, right, guys? Well, what we'd be able to do is we would be able to target the Siliquis beneath our current Siliquis, summon it, return the second copy of Siliquis to our hand, send these two to the severed pile, and then put Siliquis on top of Siliquis, draw the two cards again, and combo up from there. So again, there's definitely a bunch of combo tricks for that card, uh, definitely more more amazing things that uh, I can't really list off in this video, just some really cool combo tricks there. I'll make more videos about the combos for these later, but again, this card is really insane. Do not overlook it. I highly recommend running it if you are doing an evolution strategy. Next, of course, a card that is great for the evolution strategy, but honestly for any deck alone, is the Evolving Advancement card. Now this card costs 2 life, and its effect reads that once per turn, you may discard a card, and if you do, draw 2 cards. So this card is incredibly amazing, just being able to draw an additional 2 cards from your deck for the very low price of 2 life and just 1 discard from your hand. This card can go honestly in any deck. It doesn't have to be just in the evolution deck. But it's just an amazing card just for card advantage alone. And then next, of course, we do run one copy of Evolutionary Ascendance. So this card is really cool, and it reads that once per turn, if a Primordial Evolution Alatar is in your summon zone, place up to two cards from underneath that card on up to two of your different summon zones. So what this means is if you have Alatar out, of course, you're going to have Siliquis and Narvana beneath it. So you're able to bring out your Siliquis and your Narvana with it for some maximum damage. It does cost 7 life, which is a bit steep, but again, for the damage out part that you're doing, it's definitely worth it. Next, of course, a card that I highly recommend at 4 copies in any evolution deck ever <laughs> would have to be the Evolution Break. Now, what this card reads is that add one different evolution card from your body to your hand and then shuffle your body. So this card basically is just another copy of pretty much anything that you need, but say you really need to get into your Acnail, this card functions to get your Acnail. This card functions to get pretty much your entire deck and all of your combos that you need. And again, it's just an additional four copies of Acnail pretty much. It's insane, it's amazing, and I highly recommend playing it. And something that is very noteworthy for this is it is not once per turn. So if we have multiples of this, say you draw four copies of this, just for example. One, two, three, four, four different ways to get into your combos. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that card. This card is absolutely insane. I definitely recommend running it at four copies. Next, of course, we have what I think is honestly a very, be a very, very, very beautiful card, 
That is the Strength of Evolution. So this card reads that once per turn, when an Evolution Summon card you control is severed by battle or by an opponent's card effect, summon a different Evolution Summon card from your severed pile with a rune count of 5 or less. So say you have your baby Acnail out. Oh no, that card gets severed. Well, you're able to bring out something like your Narvana or something even like Siliquis, because that is a uh, five rune count or below. So you're basically able to get uh, pretty much any of these three out. Again, so you can not only go into your further combos, but it's another way to recover, so I definitely recommend running that card. Again, it's a response card as well, which makes it all the more better. Next, of course, we do run one tech card this is mainly in here uh to promote the dual decks uh the fight between the demonic corruption deck and the primordial evolution this card is demon's end and this card is a stagnant life type arcane that cost four life and this reads turn all of your face up voided cards face down if any if you do send a void summon and opponent controls to the void face down you cannot play void summons on the turn that you play this card so basically, this is the card that you want to run if you're trying to out any Void Summon cards. Uh, this card is probably, let alone like the weakest card of the deck on its own. If you're playing against the Demonic deck or any deck that uses Void Summons, that's very good, but just on its own. I'd probably recommend cutting it for uh, probably something like Miracle, honestly. That would probably be a lot better for the deck. But as the deck list comes for the Primordial Evolution deck list, we do have the Demon's End card as that one of copy. Next, of course, for one-ofs, we do have the Primordial Origin Arcane card. And this card reads that once per turn, if you control a Primordial Evolution Elatar, send all Arsenal and Summon cards target opponent controls to the Severed Pile. However, you cannot attack on the turn that you activate this effect. So this card is basically a way to clear the field. It does kind of suck that you're losing out on your attack, but again, would you rather clear the field in that instance if you can't get over it, or would you rather just sit there and have the field to worry about? So, yeah, that's uh, definitely why we're going around that. Next of a card that is at two copies for this deck, but I'd highly recommend playing more of, uh, would be the Hidden Sanctuary card. So this card reads that once per turn, if you have an evolution character summon in your severed pile, you may add a different evolution character summon from your severed pile to your hand. So say we have a Siliquis and a copy of our Acnail in the severed pile. We play this card targeting the Siliquis, but getting back our copy of Acnail so we can use that for further combos. So it's another way to combo potentially, but it's another recovery card, so I definitely recommend running this in any evolution deck that you plan on making. And finally, for the last card of the Primordial Evolution deck, we do have the amazing, the powerful Spirit of Lutharia. So this card reads that once per turn, target a life-type weapon you control. That card gains life bound until end of turn. And again, we all know what life bound does. That's incredibly amazing. But however, it says when you would play an evolution card, draw a card, you can only use this effect once per turn. So again, combos, 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 you have this card out, you get to play your Acnail card, you not only get to draw a card off of that, but now that you have your Acnail and your Spirit of Lutharia, you're able to get out basically your big boss card, which would be Lutharia. You get to combo more and hopefully you'd be able to get out Elatar as well. So, yeah, that's just a, a few basic combos for the deck, a few basic things for here and there, but again, guys, uh, this is currently my favorite deck in the game. Uh, I just love the evolution cards. But, yeah, guys, uh, with that in mind, uh, let me know what you think about the deck profile in the comments down below. Be sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at skyscape underscore TCG. Check out my Discord because that's amazing too. And as always, guys, aim high and pierce the skyscape. Goodbye, guys!